Hello drummers, welcome to Tim Conley Drums. Today we have a super special video, something that I have uh, borrowed from my friend David Ward, who interviewed Dom Famulero on his YouTube channel, Off The Record. In this video, which is very, very special video, Dom talks about the first time he met Buddy Rich, the legend Buddy Rich, and how he met Buddy Rich through his drum teacher, Al Miller, who was friends with Buddy. It's an incredible story. I've heard this story personally, live, in person. Buddy told, or sorry, Dom told me this story about Buddy. He told it to me many times, actually. <laughs> but one of the things that I am doing now is um, obviously I'm still grieving the loss of my dear friend you have to understand I love Dom so much like a father he we were so close we laughed we cried we talked about everything we did everything together Dom and I as much as we could of course because he lives nine ten hours away from me and the guy was super busy and of course I'm busy too we're all busy but I always took the time to try and contact him, and he always contacted me. He was an amazing, amazing human being, and I want you to hear this story because nobody, t I could tell you the story myself, but nobody tells a story like Dom Famulero. That's another thing that I'm going to miss. At our lessons and our phone calls, our Zoom meetings, you know, uh, just time together, he always would share with me incredible stories about Buddy, about Joe Morello, about Shelly Mann, about Louis Belson, about many, Tony, Tony Williams, you know, Frank Sinatra, uh, he would tell me incredible stories about amazing artists that he knew and he got to meet over the years, he knew everybody in the music industry, specifically the drummers more so than anybody, but he knew everybody. So he always had a great story to tell. So I want you to really grab some popcorn, grab yourself a drink, settle in. It's not that long the story, it's just a little over five minutes, but enjoy this story because it's an amazing story. And like I said, nobody tells a story quite like Dom Famulero. Enjoy. With Al, I was with Al for like four or five years and I became mm. Al's top student in the fact that when he went on, uh, on a holiday with his wife for a couple of weeks, he asked me to sub his teaching practice. Wow. So I, I had the key to his house, to his studio, and I went there and I taught for two weeks and, and taught his students and it was just a wonderful experience. Mm. Then when Al came back, he said, you know, he said, Dom, he said, you did a great job. All the students loved your lessons. I want you to come over to my house next week and I want you to have a, a you know a lesson you know a, a, and have a, a session and meet a, a buddy friend of mine mm -hmm. so, oh, well, I want you to, a buddy friend of mine we'll have a little hangout together it'll be great I said great I said yeah, yeah, a buddy friend of his yeah great so I, yeah. I, I I'm gonna I'm give you a couple of days later it comes up so as I'm driving to Al's house you had you know had to kind of come off of a major highway on that major highway was a club called poor Peters okay and it was a big club that had a lot of bands performing there. And as I ride by that club to go to Al's house that night for dinner, I see on the marquee, tonight, the Buddy Rich Big Band. Mm, cool. I knew Al always talked about Buddy, and he loved mm -hmm. Buddy. He mm -hmm. studies Buddy's charts. Mm -hmm. So I go to the place, and say, I'm going to go there, and I'm going to buy some tickets. Yeah. So I pull in the place, and I go, and I buy three tickets, one for me, one for Al, and one for his buddy friend. <laughs> I get these tickets put in my pocket. I drive to Al's house. I knock on the door. I said, Al, I said, man, this is great to be here. Have I got a surprise for you? <laughs> said, That's wonderful. Come on in the house because I've got a surprise for you too. Yeah. <laughs> I walk in the house into his foyer area and I turn to his dining area, his living area, and there sitting on the couch is Buddy Rich. Wow. It's amazing. I, I was, I was, to say I was, I was awestruck or, or flabbergasted. Yeah. You know, the old Honeymooners show, I started doing an imitation of Ralph Cramden. Right. I started going, humana, 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 I couldn't believe this sure. was like Buddy. And I had right. just seen Buddy a couple of days before on the Johnny Carson show. Sure. He just did a special with Sinatra. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was like yeah. the biggest of the biggest. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Buddy's there. I'm shaking his hand. Al says, Buddy, I want you to meet Dom, my student. Dom, this is Buddy Rich. 
And as I'm shaking Buddy's hand, I turn to Alan and said, Al, you said I was going to meet a Buddy friend of yours. This is not a Buddy. This is the That's Buddy. The this buddy. is a <laughs> Buddy. Well, yeah, it's great. Yeah. We had a good laugh out of it. We sat and had dinner. And then about, you know, at a certain time, Buddy says, he looks at his watch and goes, hey, guys, we got to get to the gig. So let's, you know, we got five minutes. And, we'll, and he says, I'll drive. We'll take my car. Mm. I'm like, oh, the gig. Yeah. This is the gig. He's I playing just, tonight. Yeah. So I forgot all about it. So we get outside. And there's a like a red Corvette Stingray in Dow's driveway. And Buddy says, this is great. We'll drive. He said, Dom, you get in the back seat. Al, you get in, and I'll drive you guys there, and I'll drive you guys home afterwards. Hmm. So, like, it's a regular guy. Yeah. So, if you know a Corvette Stingray, there's really no back seat. It's a two-seater, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the back. I, just, I didn't care. I was getting in Buddy's car if my legs had to hang out right. the free. <laughs> I get in the car. I'm in the back seat. We start driving. And at one point while we're driving, we play out of the driveway. And I said, geez, I said, guys, I, I, I just so you know, I bought three tickets to the concert tonight to mm. hear Buddy play. <laughs> So Buddy turns while he's driving and he goes, well, how stupid is that? He says, you're going to be sitting backstage without. Give me your three tickets. Wow. Wow. I reach in my pocket. I get the tickets out. I hand them up to Buddy. He pulls in front of poor Peter's, and there's a lineup of people buying tickets. Mm -hmm. Buddy gets out of the car, mm -hmm. goes to the last three people in line, gives them my ticket, and says, I'll see you guys front row center. It's gives unbelievable. Them, it's back in the car. We drive around the back of the club. We go in the back door, he puts two folding chairs on the side of the stage, and Al and I are sitting there. And all of a sudden, Buddy says, I'll catch you guys after the show, and he walks back to the band. Mm. At this point, I turned to Al and I said, Al, what the freak is this all about? Right. This is, how do you know Buddy? How, why did you tell me you were, I was going to meet the Buddy? Right. Hey, I don't know, this is a, he says, if I told you you were going to meet Buddy Rich, and you told some friends, it would have been uncomfortable. Right. He said, so it's great that you just met him this way. And he said, I met Buddy, we became friends in World War II. We were in the Marines together, mm. and we were partnered together in World War II. Wow, amazing. The Marines, so Buddy was his partner. Yeah. And the fact that we were both drummers from New York, we hit it off, and since we got out of the war in 45, he said, we've been dear friends. Whenever Buddy comes to town, he calls me up, and I go to hear the band. 1971, and I am like, and I am like as high as you can imagine. Yeah. From now having the chance to have met this this legend, this phenomenal player. Absolutely. He was just a regular guy, a mm -hmm. great, great guy. We heard that concert that night. Mm -hmm. he, he blew us away two sets. Yeah. We finished. We got back in the car. We drove home, had a cup of coffee at Alice House afterwards. Then he left to go meet the band at the hotel. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And I had a chance to meet Buddy and experience that same situation by going backstage. Probably, I, I, I'd have to say, easily... 50 to maybe a hundred times. I mean, he mm, played wow. in the tri-state area, whether he was in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, or Boston area. Mm. I would get the call, we'd hop in the car, and we'd drive up. It's incredible. And go to hear him play, so it was amazing. It's incredible. Well, I hope you enjoyed that story as much as I did. Like I said, I heard that story live. I heard it a few times. I heard many, many other amazing stories very similar to that story. One of the things that I developed through Dom was... I started telling my students stories. I would tell them stories that Dom told me. Hey, Dom Tamilero told me this story about how he met Buddy Rich, and I would tell them the story. But beyond that, I would start telling students about stories of me meeting people, because I've met hundreds and hundreds of drummers over the years, and how I met them. And, you know, I have a really funny story, I'm not going to tell it now, but um, the second time that I met Neil Peart was under unbelievable circumstances and it was mind-blowing meeting Neil Peart. He's my hero. So I began to be able to share my stories with my students and I never really did um, when I was teaching share stories with my students very much until I started studying with Dom over 15 years ago and Dom shared all his stories. So then I started doing that and I learned that sharing the stories with your students and with people in general, not just your students. Obviously the students had a vested interest because they're drummers, but I would tell people stories um, about things that I've done in the music industry, people I've met and whatever, just for fun as well. And people love to hear these stories. That's why I wanted to share this video with you. And it gives you a little bit more 
of an indication of the kind of person that Dom was and how much people adored him. Buddy Rich adored Dom Famulero. And Dom's one of those guys that the second you meet him, within, within seconds of meeting him, you immediately like this man. It's just the way he was. So I'm going to do a few more really special videos specifically dedicated to Dom. And, you know, like I said, he's, he was so important in my life. And I want to make him important in your lives. And I want to let his incredible legacy carry on because he wasn't just a drummer. He, he was so much more than that. And I want people to, through my channel, partially, I mean, I can't do it all, obviously, but partially through my channel, get to know Dom, and then you'll have an understanding of why I love them so much. I posted on my communication page on YouTube, Dom's eulogy. He wrote it himself. He wrote it just a few days before he died. He actually didn't write it. He dictated it to somebody. Somebody else wrote it, but it's all Dom's words. Please go and check out my communication page and you can read Dom's eulogy. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. I'll be back again soon with another video, maybe a reaction, maybe a lesson, maybe another Dom thing. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But as always, please remember Dom Familero. Onward and upward, as Dom would say. And always keep drumming, as I always say.